Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Wednesday morning mountain weather forecast. My first stop is right here on radar, and you can see the leading edge of our storm system, the one that's going to bring snow to a lot of the Intermountain West. Uh, we've got rain and snow right now, depending on elevation, and this storm is going to play out in that fashion. When you see these early season storms, like even in October, elevation is absolutely critical to determining what kind of precip you're going to get. Um, so let me take you over to water vapor satellite imagery here this morning. Oranges and reds, drier air aloft, your whites and your blues, that's where your moisture is. And there's our big storm system digging into the Pacific Northwest and parts of BC. Behind it, there's another storm system spinning there. Um, and we do have jet stream support uh, running right beneath this, uh, this, supporting this area of low pressure. The whole thing will eventually move in to the Intermountain West. And that low will then, down the road, get cut off over the four corners. And this is the thinking yesterday as well. And it's going to sit for a couple of days and spin over parts of the four corners, Colorado, New Mexico to be specific. And that's where we're going to see some, uh, some pretty big totals in southwest Colorado, uh, snow totals as a result of all of this. All right, so here are my bullet points this morning. So storm system still on track for... Uh, late 1016 through probably 1018 in Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado. The bulk of the activity in most of the mountain ranges in those states happens 1017 and 1018. Then the low cuts off 1018, 19, and 20 over parts of Colorado, New Mexico, and that's when the bulk of the snow in those areas will accumulate. Um, it, the, one of the most interesting parts of this, and I just mentioned it, was is going to be elevation. It's going to be Where's the rain snow line? In Utah, this is really problematic right now, um, trying to pin down exactly where that rain snow line is going to be, especially for the Wasatch. I think we're in good shape in the high you win is, um, you're, you're so far high up, much higher up there. I don't think this is going to be an issue at all. But in the Wasatch, I think the rain snow line is going to start at 11. But then how quickly does it fall? How quickly does it drop to a lower elevation as colder air moves in? I think it eventually ends up at around 6,000 feet, which means a lot of places are going to see snowfall. You know, how far down into the valley does that, uh, does that drop? Is it below 6,000? But so how quickly do we see the rain change over to snow? That's going to be one of the biggest determining factors as to how much snow we see in the Wasatch. So right now, my updated totals, grand totals of the as of this morning for the entirety of the storm. Kings Peak still looking at a foot or more up there in the parts of uh, the High Uintas. Granite Peak, Montana, a foot or more. Chicago Basin, one to two feet. I've taken the plus off of there, so I think it's going to be somewhere in that one to two foot range for southwest Colorado and the San Juans. Then the trickiest part is going to be the Wasatch. You know, does little cottonwood change over to snow even faster? And if it does, then the totals go up. Right now, I'm thinking of range, maybe between 6 to 12 inches up there at Alta and Snowbird Mid-Mountain. If you're higher up, you're going to get more snow. I mean, that's the bottom line. I want to show you this. So this is um, the wet bulb freezing level in feet. Um, so uh, you, you can see the, the labels, like 10 and a half would be 10 and a half thousand feet. 11 and a half would be 11 and a half thousand feet. So let me just start this down the road, and you can watch as the snow low. Here comes the precip. So here you can see the cold front and there'll be precip lined up along this. This is Thursday, early on the 17th. Here we are during the day. So your freezing levels started 11. Now we're down to about 10. And this is, uh, this is mid to late uh, part of the day on the 17th. So the freezing level is dropping. It's turning colder. And then look at it here. There's the heart of the cold air plowing into the, the Wasatch. The whole time we're looking at snow over most of the high winters. It's just the timing of this, of this drop, of this colder air moving in. How fast does it happen? You can see at this point, it looks like our rain snow line is down to maybe eight, 9,000 feet in the Wasatch, maybe even lower, and continuing to fall fast. And then look at that. It's all the way down to 6,000 feet by the time we get into early Friday uh, on the 18th. And like I said, maybe we even have some snow on the benches, snow down in the valley areas in some spots. Is there a component of lake effect off of uh, the Salt Lake? Yet to be seen, yet to be even determined. But 
Focusing on the Wasatch, there is definitely going to be colder air moving in, and that will take the rain or rain snow over to all snow um, eventually. And let me just run this out. You can see it stays at a pretty low elevation for the rest of the storm. So pretty interesting stuff. Okay, let me uh, take a look at the moisture, the humidity in the atmosphere. This is Telluride in Colorado. This is the time height forecast of humidity through all layers vertically of the atmosphere. You read the timeline from right to left on the bottom, and you can see how the green increases on the 17th, on the 18th, and definitely on the 19th in southwest Colorado, 18, 19, 20 are really the key days where we're going to see the atmosphere saturated and the wind. You'll notice the wind is transporting that moisture up through the levels of the atmosphere. So we're lifting it up over the terrain, and that's going to be our prime time for snow accumulation. Um, let me just give you another perspective. Let me take you back to Alta, Utah. So this is the weather research forecast model. Um, and the bottom line is, I want, this is about 9,000 feet at Alta. So I want you to look down at the two bottom columns. Even this model, run at about six kilometers of resolution, thinks that the beginning part of it is rain. And then it changes over to snow by the time we get into late on the 17th and the early on the 18th. And that is what I was showing you with that, uh, that wet bulb freezing level. This is basically mirroring that. So the question is, do we change it over earlier and then end up with more snow accumulation? That's something I'll be looking at through the course of today and tonight. Here's the jet stream forecast. At close of business today, there comes our storm system, dip in the jet in other words. Here it is, you can see the trough moving into parts of Idaho, Montana, Utah, Wyoming, and then eventually into Colorado, and the low will begin to cut itself off or be cut off from the main flow to the north. So there's the 18th late in the day. There's your low sitting right over the four corners, snowing hard in southwest Colorado. On 1020, it's still there, and then it exits on 1021, and then we have to see what's next out to the west. There's a nice trough setting over the Pacific, starts to move towards California, 1024 and 1025. So it does open the door to more activity later down the road. Here's the forecast radar and satellite to time everything out. There comes our leading edge. There's 1017, there's 1017 late. Now by the morning of 1018, like I was saying, everything changes over to snow. You're looking at all snow through southern and southwest Montana, uh, the Tetons, uh, parts of the, uh, the Wind River. I think the Wind Rivers end up with more accumulation than the Tetons. And there's your snow over the Wasatch, the high Uintas, all the way down to Bryan Head. Precip in Colorado, again, you have, a pretty, you have a pretty high rain snow line initially in Colorado, and then it begins to fall. There's your snow. Now, that's Saturday morning, 1019. Snow south of I-70 in Colorado over uh, parts of uh, the San Juans, the San Grita Crystals running down towards Taos. And it's still there. The low is just spinning, and that's why it keeps the snow going, and then it finally gets moved out, gets kicked out. And here's 1022, there's 1023, and there is 1024. Here comes our next storm system into California by 1025. All right, snowfall forecast. Some numbers have gone down, some have gone up, but uh, looking at about the same, looking about the same up in Wyoming, Southwest Montana, Southern Montana. Um, so anywhere from six to 12 for Alta Snowbird. Uh, but if you're higher up, closer to 10 or 11,000 feet, you may be all snow or certainly with a minimal amount of mixing and you're going to get more accumulation. This is kind of a mid-mountain forecast. Uh, in Colorado, two to four inches, maybe up to six inches across I-70 and north. A lot more down in the San Juans. So here's the uh, updated forecast here as I see it for the San Juans. Um, so we're looking at generally one to two feet over the heart of the San Juans, like Silverton, the Chicago Basin area, Rio Grande, over Wolf Creek and Purgatory. I've edged the numbers down a little bit in Telluride, Uray, uh, Dallas Peak, for example, um, but still even potentially could see some snow all the way down to the valley floor over Durango, Bayfield, Del Norte. Small accumulation, but it's possible you're going to see some snow even there. So very interesting to see how this storm evolves over time. And one again, one of the most interesting aspects is going to be is going to be this. It's going to be the rain snow line through the Wasatch in particular. Um, so keep an eye on the numbers here today. See what the temperature profile looks like through the course of time. 
but right now thinking that these are going to be probably the ranges uh, for grand totals. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great Wednesday.